Many people say artificial intelligence is the next big thing since the invention of the internet. The sudden rise of large language models like ChatGPT and Ernie from Baidu have fueled the hype. AI will be a common language the world speaks, allowing humans to build the Tower of Babel all over again. The convenience of the technology makes one wonder. Is it still necessary and desirable to learn a new language? The answer is yes. There is still a big crowd interested in language learning. Roughly 1.2 billion people around the world are estimated to be learning a new language, and the number is growing. Language translation with computers has been really good for the last 10 years. If you're just visiting Germany for three days, the best thing to do is probably to use an automatic translator. But if you actually want to learn German because you want to move there, or if you actually want to learn English to conduct business, the translator is not going to be good enough. It's very awkward to have a conversation where you're just waiting very, you know, several seconds until that happens. The other thing to say is computers are better than humans at playing chess. There are way more people playing chess now than there were, uh, than there's ever been. It's just people want to do certain things even if computers are good at it. Created in 2011 by Louis von Ahn, a Carnegie Mellon University computer scientist, Duolingo offers customized learning exercises, immediate feedback, and gamification. It soon rose to become one of the world's largest education apps with over 500 million users, providing equal access to over 40 languages for anyone who wants to learn. Duolingo is mainly known for making an app to learn languages, so you can learn uh, as much as you want entirely for free. And the other really nice thing about Duolingo is that while you're learning, it really feels like you're playing a game. It's fun and it's free. Unlike the traditional method of learning where beginners can be scared by grammatical rules and painful memorization of long lists of vocabulary, Duolingo breaks down the learning sessions into manageable chunks, which can be completed anywhere, anytime. With the help of AI, users can get customized exercises based on their own learning record. We've used AI from the very beginning when we launched Duolingo about 12 years ago. Whenever you're using Duolingo, the system watches everything you're doing. It remembers all of that and it uses that to build a model for each user. And if, for example, if it knows that you're not good at the past tense, it may give you more exercises related to the past tense. So we use AI to tailor what we teach specifically to you. Of late, the other place where we're starting to use AI a lot is in uh, giving you conversational practice. Practice a multi-turn conversation with an artificial intelligence. You may say, how are you doing? I'm doing well. Well, what are you doing today? I'm going to a restaurant. Oh, which restaurant? Like that type of, that type of multi-turn conversation, we can do it with speaking or with writing. Already Duolingo got as good as a classroom, but we're not as good as a one-on-one -on -one human tutor. And I think with AI, we're getting closer and closer to be as good as a one-on-one -on -one human tutor. That's, that's, that's what we're doing. And Duolingo isn't stopping at language learning courses. It aims to become the go-to place for users to learn many other skills too, all with a slice of fun. We're starting to teach things other than languages. So we're starting to teach math, for example. Uh, that's not yet available in, in the China market, but it will be soon. Uh, and the idea is that we're going to be teaching math, music, and many other subjects, not just languages, uh, in a similar way to Duolingo, which is free and fun.